So I want to give a short overview of just the whole thought of starting with signal processing first for electrical engineering majors and, and for electrical engineering and computer engineering majors. Um, and, and this has a, a very interesting history that I've gotten a chance to live through parts of it, so um, something I wanted to make sure to mention. So, I mean, if you were to classically look at a typical electrical engineering education, say from the 50s to the 90s, you always started with circuits. Circuits was like the first class that you got, your, got into and you got to learn about things, and you learn signal processing through circuits. Fair enough, because much of signal processing as we know it and much of what we understand of transform theory and so forth came out of circuits. So it seems only natural, and so there's some really beautiful connections there. And in fact, if you were like in the early 1990s, you know, digital signal processing would have been a gradual course or maybe a fourth year course. And that was very, very typical. And so then you begin that, so then you start to go, hmm, but this is interesting material, so, you know, is it, could it be, you know, could you do something different? And I think that there is some, always a good perspective of like, what can we continuously get earlier in our electrical engineering curriculum to our students? Because I think it actually gives them opportunities to see and touch things. And I think in the early sense for signal processing, this is what was, what was hoped for. It was like, but wait, we can do so many different things with signal processing. Why don't we give that opportunity and that visibility to our students? And let's do that right at the beginning, so that way they have that basis all the way from, from the very start. And then when they do circuits, they already have knowledge in signal processing, and so you can really show circuits as what they truly are often is signal processing engines, ways of doing computing, ways of, of, of getting various answers from real-world data through where uh, to other real-world locations, actuators, things that need to be done. So this sort of concept, and there's a couple different ways one could approach this. Some people wanted to approach getting circuits in, in students' hands, you know, in the first year, in the freshman year. Wonderful idea. Uh, people like Yana Severe, Satos Gerdi, and I strongly support that perspective as well. But what was interesting is that Ron Schaefer and Jim McClellan, as well as a few others at Georgia Tech, who pretty much were the people who like, founded this field uh, of, of uh, signal processing or digital signal processing in particular, and a few people at Rice and Rose Holman, and some, you know, not wanting to ignore anyone, but it was a wonderful energy at the time. And one of the things that came out of that was to start off with a full book, a full implementation of a course that started, um, that, that started at Georgia Tech and fully implemented when we actually switched from quarters to semesters at Georgia Tech and became the conversation of signal processing first, a class that was really intended for first and second semester um, students to be taken, but it was a requirement for all UCE students. And was an amazing course and gave students so much ability and confidence through their, through their education. Um, many, many students got jobs because they had such deep grounding in what was considered simply a graduate level course. And so it was an amazing sort of thing. Uh, now we look back at this more than 20 years ago now uh, and can kind of see some of, some of um, can see the impact. Uh, it was really built around a perspective of having two large lecture sections, uh, which would be very typical, have everyone together. This is how to implement it for a large department. Georgia Tech is a large department, uh, 400 undergraduates. Uh, and that was certainly true at that time as well. But then we had faculty led recitations and also weekly computer exercises. Um, one, the faculty led recitation was amazing. I got to involve with that many, many times. And it was amazing to see the absolute, the absolute amazement out of, the, out of the learning in the students' eyes. And it's something I've never forgotten. And it's something that uh, influences much of the way I actually approach other, teaching other classes even to today. The computer exercises were very much designed to show, oh look, here's something about sound, here's something about images, here's something about various pieces, and really sort of transforms many of the ways people, you know, would think about what, what may be like a very mathy and very dry looking subject, but really empowers everything we, we get our fingers on. And in being in, you know, very much multi, other multimedia disciplines, it's pretty incredible what's possible. 